I'm sorry to say it, but you're doing it wrong. Most investors buy at the absolute worst time and they do it time and time and time again, meaning that they lose consistently in the market. Now, if you want to increase your odds of winning it big, of making the big ka-ching ka-ching in this market, then your entries are as important as your exits. Everyone talks a lot about take profits, take profits, take profits, me included. But if you do not time your buys right, then there's not gonna be any profits to take. This is one of the most important skills to actually learn as an investor in these markets and is inevitably going to separate out the winners from the losers. And the tips in this video will dramatically increase your chances of being on the winning side of the equation of making money in the markets. And look, I've made these mistakes. Anyone who's been in the market for a while has made these mistakes, but I also learned a lot from making these mistakes and was able to make millions. And I'm also the founder of the best newsletter in the cryptocurrency industry, but more on that in a minute. Now let's dive in number one, a terrible time to buy a coin is usually at listing. Often the first few minutes of trading are the absolute worst time to buy. We see massive FOMO and valuations just go crazy, but the entire first day can also be pretty brutal. Often prices will rise for a few weeks later for the strongest coins, but you could be facing a 50% drop between listing day hype and a future price rally, especially when prevailing market conditions are bearish. There's always exceptions, there's always you know, the standouts, right? But this is in most cases. You're better off waiting a week or maybe two to start building a position into a coin. You will often find a much better price point during that time period. Not always, but usually. Let's look at Aptos as an example. The first few minutes of trading saw an unreal spike up to $98. What? Just for a moment though, if I feel bad for that person who clicked the sell button at that point. But to be honest, a more realistic point that likely drew in a lot more buyers was four days after listing when it went as high as $10 before collapsing 67% in the following two weeks. Now it would later rally up to $20 and anyone who was patient, didn't film it in the first few days, bought it four or $5, they made multi hundred percent gains off of that next rally. FOMO buyers either got wrecked or simply made much smaller profits, assuming that they didn't get shaken out on that 67% drop and held from $10 to $20 and finally realized some profits. Number two, do not buy when technical indicators are showing strong overbought readings. Now extreme overbought signals, for example, the relative strength index hitting over 90 tends to be a bit of a red flag. When this happens, your spidey sense should be going off. In fact, any reading over the purple box for the relative strength index, so 70 and above, but especially 80 and above and really 90 is like, whoa, these are warnings that the market is getting really overheated. And you should start thinking about looking for exits, not entries. Look at the example here, RSI on Matic, topped out at 97.5 just a couple of days before the blow off top hit at $2.91. But you need to use this in coordination with other indicators. RSI itself is not enough because as this chart shows, the 97.5 reading was actually the second time that it had hit that high of a reading. Two months earlier, it hit that high at 25 cents, a 10x difference if you sold solely based off of this indicator. Although had you accumulated for like one cent during the bear market, you still made like 25x gains. But other things you can consider is for example, what was that was a, a double top on the RSI for Matic, right? So that's something else to consider. Or you can add in other indicators like the MACD. See, for example, the blue line on the MACD actually started trending down at the same time, indicating a possible trend reversal is coming into play here. So these are all things to consider. Two weeks later, it did put in a bearish cross, by the way. Now, had you exited here, you would have actually avoided a further 70% drop, locked in gains and avoided lots of pain and agony. Number three, resistance. Everything is pumping, you're late to the party, but screw it, let's click the buy button anyway. Oh boy, oh boy, we've all been there, we've all been there. Don't, don't put yourself up. And look, usually this emotion cycle kicks in right around resistance. Let's look at this Bitcoin chart here, great example. The arrow on the left shows where Bitcoin stalled in August, 2022, right around $25,000. Then we fast forward a few months and we get the arrow on the right hand side of the chart here. And we can see two weekly candles for Bitcoin, both struggling to get over the $25,000 mark. Also note here that the volume is very, very low. So that's showing that the move is running out of steam at resistance. Buying at this point is dangerous. And of course, prices fell by 20% in the following weeks. Now, instead of buying at resistance, wait for a breakout. 
wait for a retracement to come in. Either way, you're going to be likely making a safer move based off of the resistance. Now, before we discuss the next most dangerous times to be buying, I wanted to let you know about Wealth Mastery. This is my weekly crypto investor report coming straight to your inbox. And look, I get it. Life's busy, kids, wife, job, dog, watching my YouTube videos. Well, this is the report that every busy investor who really wants to keep up to date with what is happening in the market and who wants to find amazing money-making opportunities, well, this is the report that you need. This is the report you need to send in that 10 minutes to read every week to your inbox, altcoins, charts, airdrops, DeFi, and much, much more. Join over 75,000 weekly readers for free by signing up using the link down below. The fourth worst time is, did this coin just announce a big partnership with Apple or whatever? Big news stories, right? Wow, that's amazing. They're, they're teaming up with Apple and it's only up by 50% today. Well, I better buy before it's too late. Click. No, nine times out of 10, the price of that coin will come back down in a few weeks once that short-term buzz wears off. These big news stories can certainly improve the long-term fundamentals of any particular coin. You know, teaming up with Apple, depending on the partnership, can really have some solid value. But for the most part, these big stories, no matter how impactful they might seem at first, tend to have little more than a short-term impact on the price. And when you show up late to that news, when you buy after the major news has already been released, the pump has already come, then you're basically signing yourself up to be nothing more than exit liquidity which is not awesome. I don't make the rules. This is just how it is, guys. You need to have patience in this game. Resist the urge to FOMO into really big pumps that are caused by news. Sure, sometimes it's gonna keep pumping, but that's the exception, not the rule. Ask yourself this, how would you feel about this news in three weeks when the price is down by 50%? Will it still make you feel bullish? And you go, wow, it's got to team up with Apple now, it's at a 50% discount. And you go, oh no, it must not have been that important. I'm not, I'm not gonna buy it, now. I'm gonna sell the loss now. Are you only bullish because the price is pumping? or not? That's the question to ask yourself. And number five, the new paradigm of money. This is the euphoria stage of the market, or sometimes just the euphoria stage for a specific coin. Now this phase is often marked by wild exuberance in the market. People posting pictures of Rolexes, pictures of their new cars, flying first class, price predictions getting out of control. Been there, done that. And of course, everyone's saying the good times are simply never gonna end. This is a super cycle, it's only gonna go up forever. Top signals, top signals. The sad truth though is that this is actually when most people come in and buy. They're drawn in like moths to the flame and they can burn just as bad. The lure of quick money, it's tempting, it's too strong for most to resist. Just looking around saying, oh, those other people got rich, I can do that too. Just need to buy now, quick, quick, quick. Reading the sentiment, it's not an exact science, but things like, uh, for example, a massive spike in Google searches for crypto overall or for a certain coin, red flag. The Bitcoin fear and greed index with readings over 90, also a red flag, although do keep in mind it can stay over that range for quite a while before things cool down. Coinbase top five downloads in the App Store, also a red flag. Long story short here, be fearful when others are greedy and greedy when others are fearful. The highest risk, lowest reward time is actually to buy is actually when you see this kind of behavior in the market. The lizard brain switches on, the greed's gonna be saying buy, and it's hard to resist when you see all this social proof of everyone getting rich, but your future self will thank you for that self-discipline. Okay, that's it. Subscribe now, I'll see you next time.